A special word of welcome to those of you watching online. We are glad you are with us and are watching. Our scripture reading for today comes from the Gospel of Matthew. It is chapter 14, verses 13 through 21, feeding the 5,000. As the passage begins, Jesus has just heard about the death of John the Baptist. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. This ends the reading of the word of the Lord for today. Let us pray. Almighty God, your holy word moves in our midst this day and makes a difference in our living. How will we be expressions of your word? Patiently, you wait to see. Amen. There's a story about two quarterbacks. Football season is just around the corner. Go Chiefs! Anyway, the starting quarterback was gifted, aggressive, and a born leader. The second string quarterback was a talented player, but let's say he was a little more limited. The team played well all season, and they found themselves in the championship game. The score was tied, the hometown team had the ball, and the clock was ticking. An opposing player broke through the line of scrimmage and slammed the star quarterback to the ground with such force that the starting quarterback had to leave the game. The coach of the team had no choice but to put in the backup. The substitute trotted out onto the field, huddled the team, and then strolled up to the line of scrimmage. Surveying the opposing team, and much to everyone's surprise, the backup yelled out 14 and changed the play. The ball was snapped. The quarterback handed it off to the halfback, who busted up the middle and sped all the way into the end zone with the winning touchdown. It was an amazing play. Moments later, in the locker room, the coach grabbed the winning quarterback by the shoulder pads and said, Son, that was a great play. How did you know to call it? The player said, Well, coach, it wasn't easy. I got up to the line, and I looked across at two of the biggest players I've ever seen in my life, and I saw their numbers. One of them was wearing a six, and one was wearing a seven. So I added those two numbers together. I got 14, and I yelled out, 14! The coach hesitated for a moment and then said, said, but son, six and seven make 13. The player, quite unmoved by the correction, said, gee, coach, if I did arithmetic like you do, we'd have lost the game. Sometimes things just don't add up the way they're supposed to. It doesn't seem to add up in today's passage from Matthew. Two fish, five loaves, and thousands of people fed. This is, of course, the famed miracle story of feeding thousands with so very little. As I just read, Jesus heard that John the Baptist had been murdered and in grief withdrew by boat to a solitary place. The crowd followed him on foot. 
when Jesus landed and saw the crowd, he had compassion for them and he healed their sick. Then when evening approached, the disciples came to Jesus and expressed thoughts like, and I paraphrase, what are we going to do? It's late. We are in the middle of nowhere and these people must be starving. Tell them to leave so they can go get food and we don't have to worry about it anymore. And Jesus said, and this might be the, my favorite part of the whole passage, and I quote, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. The disciples complained they didn't have enough. Jesus said to bring what they had, and that's when he got the, the two uh, fish and the five loaves. Jesus had the crowd sit down on the grass. He took the food, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and they gave it to the people. The people ate. They were filled. And there was a great abundance of food left over. And along with that story comes the age-old question, how could Jesus take five loaves and two fish and feed that many people? I don't know the answer to that question. But the Lord knows there's been plenty of speculation. So while we continue wondering about it today, we still need to focus on the significance of the passage. Here are some thoughts. This is the only miracle aside from the resurrection recorded in all four Gospels. As we know, details between the four accounts vary as details between any four accounts of anything always vary. For example, Matthew is the only one who mentions John's death as the reason Jesus was seeking solitude. Still, the placement of the story in all four Gospels is telling in terms of its relevance for our faith, our reflection, and our understanding of Jesus. Next, I just want to mention that the actual size of the crowd could have been around 12 to 13,000 people. Scripture calls it 5,000 men besides women and children. You do the math this time, but regardless of the actual number, we need to be more inclusive of all the people who were present. Plus, in John's account, let's remember, the food is supplied by a small boy. And last, I must tell you that I appreciate the order found in this story. I mean, even more than all those men, women, and children being fed is the fact, as we discussed at our pastor's Zoom Bible study class last week, that Jesus got all those people to sit down together on the grass at one time. Can you imagine? One time I was on a riverboat cruise in Fairbanks, Alaska, and near the end of the cruise, the announcement was made that there would be fresh salmon spread and crackers available for everybody on the boat. There were probably three to four hundred of us men, women, and children. It was made clear that there would be enough for everyone. When the announcement was made that the food was ready, it was anything but orderly. The image of pigs going to the trough seemed appropriate at the time. I just got out of the way so I didn't get trampled. And while I waited to be one of the last people to go and get the crackers and the salmon spread, there was still plenty, but I'll never forget that frenzy. It was anything but orderly. So I have a deep appreciation for the way all those people were cared for and fed by Jesus and the disciples. And the disciples. I don't want to take anything away from Jesus with this sermon. Of course I don't. And I stand by my earlier statement that the passage helps us with our understanding of Jesus. But as I was rereading the passage and started making notes for today's sermon, it dawned on me that after all that had transpired, it was the disciples who fed the people. Yes, the disciples. Oh, sure, I know they get a bad rap. Most definitely, they seem to continually struggle with their understanding of Jesus, don't we all? But they followed him and his direction throughout the Gospels, and they do so clearly in this passage as well. They gave food to the thousands, so all the people could eat. 
this makes sense. Through the ages, we see God working with people and through people to get things done in the world. A story has been told concerning a country preacher who came upon a member of his parish working in his newly made garden alongside the road. With an air of great piousness, the preacher said, Brother William, you ought to be very grateful to God for all the beautiful tomatoes, potatoes, and beans that the Lord will give you through this garden. Glancing up and down the neat rows of planted vegetables, Brother William slowly replied, Yes, Pastor, I suppose so. But you know, you really should have seen this patch of ground last year when the Lord had it all by himself. In Virginia, a small church was hosting a bake sale and crafts fair to raise money for a mission. The best cooks presented their pies, jams, and cakes. Others offered exquisite wood carvings and handmade creations. Ellen, a longtime church member, took various pieces of old clothing and cut it up so that she could sew it back together into a patchwork quilt of multiple bright colors, including red, blue, yellow, and green. However, that quilt did not sell, probably because all the bright colors were just too much for some people. So at the end of the day, the money and the leftover non-edible goods were boxed up and shipped to Africa to the waiting missionary. Upon receipt, the missionary opened the box of goods, the envelope of money, and thanked God for all the gifts that were received. The bright, colorful quilt he threw over a tree limb. That's when the local tribal chief, who had been particularly difficult to deal with, came by and admired the quilt. He draped it over his shoulders like a cape, and he admired the effect. What will you take for this, he asked the missionary. I'll take a piece of land so that we can build a new church, the missionary replied. And the deal was done. No, it doesn't always add up. But one never knows how God working with a flashy, bright quilt sewn by an elderly woman in a church can change the lives of people half a world away. Or how God working with a gentleman will make a garden. Or how God working through the hands and hearts of those disciples will feed thousands of people. Here's one more example. Sixty years ago this month, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. stood on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C., and fed 250,000 people with a prophetic vision from God that still lives on today. And it almost didn't happen. Reverend King was struggling through the first part of his March on Washington speech in August of 1963, calling for the end of racism, when someone standing near to him said, Tell them about the dream, Martin. Tell them about the dream. And he did. Reverend King departed from his prepared remarks and began to preach off the cuff about his dream for this nation, a dream that continues to nourish people today with what is possible in the eyes of the Lord. And the disciples, at Jesus' direction, improvised and fed that crowd. Today's good news is that the disciples gave the food that Jesus had taken, blessed, broken, and had given to them, and the disciples fed the crowd. Remembering that miraculous event with Jesus and the disciples, today at the Lord's table, we will share in food, taken, blessed, broken, and given. Food that is still feeding billions of people including us, this very day. Let us pray. Yes, Lord, you work with and through all your children from eons ago right up to this very moment with thanks for all that you make possible and for how you make it possible. We pray with grateful and willing 
hearts. Amen.